Hey everyone, welcome to the fourth part of the Godot bullet hell tutorial series. In this video, we're going to be spawning multiple enemies, and then uh, they'll all be shooting at the players. In the last video, we, we created the one that shoots directly at the player, but I think it's going to look pretty cool pretty quickly if we can have several of them floating down from the top of the screen, and then there'll be a lot more to dodge. And then hopefully in the next video, we'll start shooting back and actually be able to start killing enemies. And then from then on, it's just you know, fun stuff. It's just creating new enemy types and, and figuring out how the the rest of the behavior will work. So if I go into the game, right now the enemy, we only have that one enemy that's kind of statically placed in the game node. It's in this tree. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to create another node up here with basically just a script attached to it. And we can go ahead and do that. So I right click on game. I'm just going to add a node 2D, and it's in this top right corner. We can adjust its position just so we'll be able to see it. We'll set its X to 600. I can't remember what the 520. I, I, I think that's probably good enough. So it's kind of in the center, and we'll move it up. It doesn't really matter where it is, I guess. Negative 200. Well, we'll say negative 20. Actually, all right, this is not really important, but let's do negative 60. We'll just get it a little bit away. That way, if we spawn something up here, and then we can use a tween node to kind of pull it down into the, the game. So with the enemy, this is just a linked instance of the enemy node. So we're actually going to delete this. Delete node. Enemy, okay. So the enemy is gone. I can still run this. And I can still move around as a player, but we don't have an enemy anymore. But I added that node 2D, and I want to rename this enemy, we'll name it enemy spawn. And then we're going to add a script to enemy spawn. We'll put it in the scripts folder. So just to make sure that this works, okay, so I need to adjust the enemy behavior as well. Every frame, I also want the enemy to start moving down because we're going to spawn it at the top and it's going to move down through the board, hopefully towards the player. So we'll say position.x or position.y uh, plus equal to 1 times delta. That's probably a little slow, so let's do 4. And then in the script for enemy spawn, let's just say when it first starts up, we will create one of the enemies var var enemy equals get node. Well, how did we spawn the bullet? So it's going to be essentially the same way that we spawned the bullet before. So we're going to we're going to load the scene that we're going to want to spawn, and then we can instantiate it within a function. So we're basically going to do the same thing. So let's just grab this code and bring it over to enemy spawn. We'll put it up here at the top, but this is going to be enemy scene, and then the enemy scene. And then when we do the enemy, when we actually create the variable for the enemy, we just say enemy scene dot instance. And we should have the enemy, then we just need to add child enemy. So it's going to add it as a child of the enemy spawn. We should only spawn one, and then it should move down through the board, and it should shoot at the player as it's moving. Invalid get index position on null. That did not help. So we're getting index problems. I think the issue is that the bullet is maybe spawning. Let's see what happens if I take the enemy spawn and we move it within the game screen and then we try it. Nah, it's still the same problem. Oh, okay, so I figured out the problem. The issue is that our enemy scene as well as our enemy script is no longer statically in this tree. So when we're calling get parent dot get node to try to grab the player 
it doesn't work like that anymore because we don't have access. Our get parent isn't the game. Our get parent will actually be the enemy spawn. So I, this is kind of hacky, but I'm just going to try it. I think if we do get parent again, then that should work. Okay. Yeah, so that worked. It's a little hacky. It's not shooting at the player anymore perfectly, but I think I think it's having some positional issues. But I, I'll work on that in a second. I just want to get the spawning working properly to begin with. So we can probably move this enemy spawn back up. If we look at this, we'll say negative 50. Let's just speed up the enemy speed so that it actually gets moving. Back into the enemy script. Right now it's not moving by very much. So let's do 40. Well, we'll do 200. Okay. So it's moving pretty well now, but it's not shooting at the player. So I want to try to fix that. Okay. I spent a good amount of time hunting down the issue for... The, the bullet shooting directly at the player when it was spawned from enemy spawn, or when the enemy was spawned from enemy spawn. And honestly, I think the problem was just that I shouldn't have moved the enemy spawn away from the game, because now that, now that the enemy is spawning off of this node, and it's in a different tree structure than the player, the positioning was getting a little weird, and some of the math was based on, some of the position was based on the enemy spawn node itself, and since it had a different origin than the game node where the player is, then it was just getting weird. So I fixed that problem just by putting the enemy spawn right where the game is. So now it's shooting properly. And we just have to keep in mind the viewport width whenever we are spawning the enemy. So within the script, my first enemy, I'm just spawning at 250x. But we could spawn it at a random value uh, along the... Uh, the width of the viewport. So I think I can say equals rand range, and then we'll we'll give it a starting number, so we'll say 100, and then let's just do 1,000. So if I run this, it should show up kind of randomly along the line. That's pretty good, and then if I run it again, that's the same spot. I think I would have to randomize the seed, probably. Yeah, I guess it's going to come from the same spot every time. So what if I say randomize? We call randomize before we call that. And now I think it should be different every time. Yeah, so now it's actually randomizing. And we're getting a different random seed. Okay, so we're, we're kind of creating the enemy at the top. That took a lot longer to make work than I thought it would. But what I actually want to do is spawn it a little bit above the screen and then have it kind of shoot into the onto the board quickly using a tween node and then it'll assume it's kind of normal movement. So what I want to do is go into the enemy scene again and we're going to add a tween node. Tween. And then okay, so we have the tween. We can rename this to move. Move tween. Something like that. And then in the enemy script, whenever we spawn, this will be kind of dirty for now, but let's just see what happens. Let's say that, let's get that, well, I guess first we can just get that tween node. So var uh, tween equals load or get node. Get node, move tween, and then in here, we don't have to do, I guess we don't have to do it like that. We can just say, move tween, we're going to use the move tween to interpolate the position property. So interpolate property, and then inside of there, we just have to give it all these arguments. Let me expand this a little bit. We have to give it all these arguments to tell it what we want to do. We are interpolating one of our properties of so self. We're going to interpolate position. Then we just reference position directly. Target. The next value is the 
uh, the time that it'll take to accomplish this. And then these are just kind of hard-coded tween dot trans. You can do whichever one you want. I'm going to do trans quint. And then the last one is tween dot ease out. You can play with these values and some of these some of these parameters. I have another video out there on tween nodes specifically. Oh, the issue is that I'm I'm using this target and I haven't defined a target. So I think what we want is to say target equals we can do a vector two again for our x. We'd want the target to be the same, so we'll say self dot position. Dot x, and then for the y, we'll say self dot position dot y. Just to see if it works, let's add a hundred to it, and we'll make that our target. And then after that, we just have to say move tween dot start, similar to the timer. So let's just run it and see what happens. I think it worked. I think it worked okay. It seems like, let's bring this down. I think that worked, but where am I? Okay, let me come back out to the enemy spawn. We're spawning it here, but I think... We'll say enemy.position.y equals negative 20. Something like that. Maybe it's happening too quickly. So it's definitely floating in from the top, but it has this weird behavior where it kind of pauses for a second and then moves. But I kind of like it. I kind of like the way that that looks. But I wish that... Let's bring this up just a little bit more. Well, it doesn't really matter where it starts because we're telling it a target position. We can tell it whatever position we want. Okay, so now that's actually coming in from the top of the screen, which is nice. And then it's kind of floating down. I, I think it's pretty nice that it pauses for just a second. Comes in and starts shooting. So what if, just to see what happens, let's go into this enemy spawn script. And let's do a couple of these. Just to, well, we'll do a loop. So four. Okay. So now we have a, a lot of enemies. They're moving pretty slowly. I mean, ideally, they would have come in at different times. That way... You know, they, they're at different levels, and we would be fighting them. Uh, but the only, the only obstacle to doing that is adding a timer node to the, to the enemy spawn. And then you'll just be able to send them out or spawn the enemies at different timers or, or different intervals. But I, I think that's a good stopping point. The video got kind of derailed a little bit by some of the errors that I made, and I couldn't quite figure out what was wrong for a little while. But... Uh, hopefully it makes sense. Everything we did, we just created a, basically, basically we just created this enemy spawn node. We're using this script to create our enemy. The big change that we made is that the enemy no longer belongs directly to the game node. It belongs to this enemy spawn. We might revisit that in the future and just go ahead and assign it to the game. But everything else mostly the same. And then I guess we added a tween a tween node to the enemy so that we would be able to get it to come in from the top in kind of a, a fancy manner and then and then it'll continue on its regular movement. But I, I plan on revisiting that as well. These are just the basics. Like I said in the last video, pre-optimization is the root of all evil. So we have to start somewhere and then just kind of move from there. Thank you for checking out this video. I hope you've enjoyed the series. Thank you for being patient with me as I kind of learn the best way to approach some of these topics, especially as I'm trying to make this more of a, I guess, a raw series where I kind of tackle the problems and what I want to do for the game while I'm recording the video so that it's kind of had this problem solving aspect to it. So thank you very much. And I hope you learned something new. If you did consider hitting the subscribe button 
and hitting the like button. That would help me a lot, and I would really appreciate it, and hopefully I'll see you in the next video.